everyone, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small. And today I'm going to be showing you something uh, new. We're going to be looking at some miniatures, but we're also going to be talking about a upcoming game. Um, so one of the things that I uh, just love is uh, World War II naval uh, history, historicals. While I love Flames of War, tanks, all that stuff, my real love, passion is uh, the Pacific Air War. I, I uh, have studied that, I build models, I collect planes, um, I just find that a very um, uh, interesting period uh, and um, I really enjoy it. So as far as current offerings out there on the market, um, there are some offerings. There is um, uh, stuff out there in smaller scale that does ships and does airplanes and some do carrier ops, uh, but none of them did what I was looking for. So um, what I'm doing is I'm working on and designing my own um, game system, which I hope to either publish or self-publish and make available to, uh, to people who might be interested or like-minded. Um, the concept is I'm just using kind of off-the-shelf miniatures that um, I have purchased. And um, the goal of the game is to kind of um, recreate um, larger scale air combat. So the goal is instead of having just a few planes attacking each other like you might see in uh, Blood Red Skies the game or something like that um, or where the air war is just um, you know completely um, theoretical you, you don't really participate in it. This is more of a um, squadron level game. So I envision a standard game might be um, I'm using as an example in my head um, an air wing or two, oh, sorry, a nudge of the camera, an air wing or two from a carrier. So maybe anywhere from 100 to 200 planes being represented on the, the tabletop. Um, normally, um, and initially, I'm doing naval ops, so I'm doing carrier aircraft. I find one of the most interesting times of the Pacific War is that 1942 period where you had all the um, big carrier versus carrier battles, Coral Sea, Midway, um, you know, all of those things that happened. While the stuff later in the war, when you get into 44, is also cool because you get a lot of cool new airplanes to play with. Um, by then, the Japanese were, um, you know, on such a curve, <laughs> such a losing curve at that point that. Um, it, it's not quite as balanced. Um, you know, Midway, Coral Sea, um, the Solomon Islands, those are all fairly, you know, we're fairly well matched. You know, the Japanese might have had an advantage in one battle, we might have had an advantage in others, but um, they were fairly close in, in numbers and in skill. All right, so I digress. So the idea is then, um, if you guys saw the recent Midway battle or know anything about the Battle of Midway, let's say the um, you know, the, the carrier uh, uh, attack on the Japanese fleet. So we might simulate, uh, you know, the torpedo planes arriving might be one scenario. Um, what I've done as far as models is I've collected from a couple of ranges and um, I've, I've settled down and I think I like the, uh, the versions that I have, um, but I'm always open to hearing different suggestions. So the ships um, are almost exclusively from GHQ. So these are 1 2400 scale ships. They are metal and um, there is some assembly required. So for example, this is a Yorktown class carrier and just its raw metal form. I haven't done anything to it. Um, they come in kits. So for example, um, I mean, well, these are a couple of carriers here, but um, you can see they come in kits. Carriers are much easier to assemble than a ship like a uh, cruiser or battleship because these you have to um, glue the individual turrets on and so on. But again, you know, even the, the biggest offenders, it might be 20 steps, 10 steps. Uh, so they're not very hard to build. And you can see that they're, you know, they're, they're a good size. They're, they're not huge. They're not going to take up a lot of the table, but they, uh, they give you enough detail that you can distinguish different 
classes of ships from each other quite easily. So I like those GHQ. I'll put a link in the description below uh, for their website. Um, you can check them out. The um, result, result of these are pretty nice once you paint them up. Um, I've got a couple of examples here. So this is a Yorktown class carrier, a large American carrier. Uh, American ships I find are easy to paint because usually they're, with a few exceptions during this time period, they're mo mostly blue or blue-gray. Um, even the decks were painted blue. Um, the deck itself is a decal and um, I'll put a link down in the description below, uh, below for the site that I used, but um, they look pretty sweet. Uh, it's a little intimidating to put down and I think that the guy who makes these sends two each um, in case you make a mistake. The Japanese carriers um, actually look pretty cool. They're a little bit more colorful, at least in their decks during 1942. So you can uh, you can see. So this is the Akagi, which is a Japanese flagship for the attack on Pearl Harbor. It was at Midway. That's where it was sunk. And you see on the back, I have a little tiny um, 12400 scale aircraft. So yes, the these kits do come with aircraft and you could put them, model them on the deck. But I don't want to play with that size airplane, that scale airplane. So what did I do instead? Well, I went back and forth on the scale that I wanted to use. At first I was looking at um, 1700 scale aircraft, which are, um, uh, 1700 is a really popular plastic model scale for ships. So there's a ton of aircraft carriers. Uh, Tamiya is a big player in there. But anyway, 1700 uh, uh, scale planes are a little bit smaller than this. Do I have an example? Um, this is a 1700 scale Japanese dive bomber. So it, it's good, but it's just a little bit too small uh, for what I wanted. So what I went with was, I believe these are 1600 scale, and these are from Pico Armor. Um, and they are a white metal. I don't know the exact alloy, um, but they are, are pretty awesome. They have good detail. They're pretty accurate, um, but they are really hard to drill into. Um, so just keep in mind. Um, so to give you a difference in scale, that's a Japanese uh, dive bomber, a Val dive bomber, and I think I have the Pico version here somewhere. Let me find one. Here's the Pico version, and you can just see, oops, it's just a little bit bigger. And just for my old eyes, a little bit easier to paint these. Um, Pico Armor has a ton of aircraft for World War II, and they're adding them all the time. Um, and uh, I really like them. So that's what I went with there. Now completed Y, so these are, you know, obviously what you get out of the box. Um, that is a Japanese Betty bomber. Um, and I did complete one, kind of show you the completed version of that, which is pretty cool. Get a little bit closer. And yes, for my uh, my testing and builds, I am using Flames of War bases because they are just about perfect. Um, two engine bombers and larger are probably going to stay on these medium bases, whereas the um, smaller one engine planes, like carrier based aircraft, would be um, on a small Flames of War base, which I find just fine. Um, And that's a painted Val from the Pico uh, armor guys. So with those down, what I'm doing here is, let's scoot these back. Um, we use a die to represent the number of aircraft in the squadron and um, that's how we take damage. So here would be an example of 
a um, air wing embarked on a Yorktown class carrier during the Battle of Midway, for example. Um, we have three different types of planes. We have a squadron of fighters. These happen to be uh, F4F, F4F Wildcats. Um, normally at that time there were 27. Um, as the war went on more and more fighters were added. Um, the Wildcats are cute little models. I love this plane. Then um, it has two different squadrons of dive bombers, a scouting squadron and a, a bombing squadron. Uh, each one of those had 18 planes in it. Um, the Dauntless is a pretty cool plane. If you saw the movie, uh, the new movie Midway, the Dauntless is pretty much the star. They didn't even have wildcats in that movie, which made me so mad. Um, but uh, you can see the uh, these Pico miniatures are pretty sweet. You have the back of the cockpit open for the gunner. Um, and then uh, the ill-fated Devastator uh, torpedo bombers. You got 15 of those. Maybe this is the USS Hornet when it's got 15. Um, and you can see the detail on that. So, as far as the dice go, things like that, I'm looking at maybe having some custom dice made instead of pips, it's like uh, maybe they're, they're airplanes. Uh, that way you maybe you even just play with dice instead of miniatures if you wanted to. Um, or some way to denote um, the number of aircraft in each unit. Um, I'm not gonna get into the mechanics of it, just more of the um, idea, again, and scale that um, I'm going for. So, as uh, you know maybe in a, a campaign game it's a pair to attack so you have this number of planes and you're going to decide how many go on an attack how many are searching um, how many fighters are you going to keep back to protect your carrier how many are you going to send to escort your bombers uh, make decisions like that so i have a lot of uh, high hopes for this um, just because again it's a pet project of mine i've been working on and toying on on and off for for years um, that I'd like to, um, you know, now that I've got more time at home, kind of make a reality. And I wanted to make this video just to kind of throw it out there and see if there was any interest in something like this. And if there is interest, anyone who might be interested in, uh, you know, maybe some future play testing or bouncing some ideas, um, you know, let me know. You can send me, um, you know, if you go over to our Facebook page, All Miniatures Great and Small, you can send me a, a PM there and uh, we can chat about it. So um, there you go guys that is um, my Pacific themed game right now. Uh, the tentative uh, title is uh, Boom and Zoom Pacific or colon Pacific or colon 1942 or something along the lines uh, but that's subject to change. Um, that was something that Jake liked and, and I kept. So there you go, guys. Um, again, let me know down in the comments below what you think. Um, is this something you'd be interested in or no? Um, do you like this, this period uh, represented in wargaming? Um, let me know down in the comments below. As always, please uh, uh, you know give us a like and subscribe. You can check us out on Facebook at All Miniatures Great and Small. Thanks for watching and keep on wargaming.